guys it's part three and a half of the overfender build series so right now where we left off in the last video we had just sprayed primer on these and uh, I can see a lot of the little spots some of the stuff that you see through here is just because it's only one coat of primer and uh, it's just kind of bleed through from the different colors of the body filler that we use but you can clearly see the spots that need attention a couple like wrinkly looking areas and some bubbles and stuff and definitely some more down here and then uh, there was a nice crack up here so I'm gonna pull these three uh, screws out and we're gonna go ahead and body fill all that we're gonna get all that as best as best we can get down here this was like probably my worst area this was just a whole section that I'd never body filled because I had the Clecos in it first but now that I can just pull these out I'm going to uh, to go ahead and just you know skim coat all of this but the parts that we did weren't too bad a couple little pinholes and stuff that we can fill up but uh we got our work cut out for us today and we're gonna go ahead and get started right away on this so stay tuned and hope you enjoy thanks take a moment right here feeling like a sound gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Like an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running, running All right, guys, so right now we've gone ahead and we've pretty much coated the entire panel. Anywhere there was a divot or a dent, only spot I really have left is up here, so I'll get that in a second. Um, went ahead and covered the flange all the way to the outside with everything. I removed all the screws and then put them back in while the Bondo is still wet because they'll unthread themselves from the Bondo when it hardens. Um, but that way I can keep all my hole positions because I like to keep the screws in there when I make the mold. That way on the mold, I'll have a clear indication of where I'll need to drill to have it line up with the holes that are in the car. So what we're gonna do right now is let this uh, dry up. You can see this whole area I covered really, uh, really heavily because all these wrinkles and dents and cracks and stuff in there. The big crack that was up here. Now, real quick before I forget, I need to go ahead and put the uh, screw back on that one. So I'll do that right now. And, uh, over here, I went ahead and I filled the divot that I saw yesterday and then a couple of the wrinkly spots back here. We're gonna let that dry for a couple of minutes and then uh, we'll go ahead and sand this down again. Try to blend it all together and uh, should be ready for our last quick coat of primer. And then we'll go ahead and make this mold. Go ahead and get this sanded out now. Grab my mask real quick.
All right, we're gonna go ahead and put on another coat real quick. Um, I had to swap over to a self-etching primer. I ran out of the other stuff that I had, but for this purpose, it'll make no difference. So we'll go ahead and get this guy finished coated so that it gets rid of any of the bleed through from the co different colors of the body filler and should be pretty good. All right, so we're gonna let that dry for another couple minutes. Um, and at this point, we should be pretty much good to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this over by hand with just like a uh, 200 or, or lighter grit sandpaper and just basically smooth it all back out. This is a self-etching primer. It's meant to be sanded once it's dry. And once it's perfectly smooth, blow it off for one last time, and then we'll go ahead and put our uh, tool coat uh, epoxy on. So stay tuned. We've let our primer dry, and I've just gone ahead and taken a red scotch Bright pad and wiped it down. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna tape off, like I said earlier, all the way around the, uh, the part. So it'll kind of act like a release agent too, because anything in terms of quality wise past the mold, we don't care about, because we're just gonna cut that off anyways. But we definitely don't want our, uh, our part sticking to the car somehow like through a hole in the tape so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, tape off all the way around with one fresh piece we'll do that real quick and then some of the products that we'll be using here we have this PVA release film which I'm gonna go ahead and uh, be spraying out of my spray gun here just uh, my cheaper spray gun we normally use a 3m setup but this is good for just spraying on release films and some quick and dirty stuff so Go ahead and use that. And then this is our black tooling gel coat that we have. Now this, we're just gonna mix up with some MEKP from the uh, polyester resin that we had laying around. Um, this is one and a half to 2% uh, mix ratio of that. And this is just gonna get brushed on with some uh, just standard paint brushes. Um, and then before we do any of that, we're gonna go ahead and rub on this stuff, which is basically like, kind of like Carnuba automotive wax, but this is specifically for mold release. So you wipe this on first, you buff this off, then you spray on your PVA release film, and then you go ahead and you uh, mix up your black tooling gel coat. And you lay this on nice and thick, cover the whole part. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and tape off this panel now. Just set up the camera here. All right guys, so we're all wiped off. Got a nice kind of gloss sheen to it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is uh, close up our part all for the minute so we do the other side and um, we'll go ahead and get our PVA release film ready to spray so uh, let's go ahead and do that so I just filled up the spray gun with the PVA release film stuff's pretty thick and it smells absolutely awful so definitely do it in a well ventilated shop if you don't have a big shop um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the airline. I already set the regulator on the gun to, it says between 90 and 100 PSI. Um, I've got a, it, the fan all the way turned up and the needle is most of the way turned in, just according to the actual directions on the sheet. I'm gonna pause those. Um, so we'll go ahead and throw the cap all ready to go. And I'm just gonna give this a nice light mist with the, uh, with the spray gun. All right, so there we go. I had to uh, adjust the gun a few times to get it to the correct uh, amount of material being sprayed out, but we've got a nice even coat the whole way around. I made sure to get a lot on the screw head. I packed the screw, the screw heads with uh, extra actual, uh, extra actual wax, the part, parting wax. So, Go ahead and let this sit on there for a couple minutes and uh, we should be good. All right, so you can clearly see here, this is right after I apply the wax before I buff any of it off. Just like a car, nothing uh, nothing crazy special with that. And the other side was the one we already sprayed the PVA on and that just looks almost like clear coat, but this says 20 to 30 minutes, let it, uh, let it sit and dry, so. We're gonna give that 20 to 30 minutes, just like it says, and uh, then we'll go ahead and start putting on the epoxy tooling uh, gel coat. 
All right, hey guys, we're back on the good GoPro camera again. Um, so I've given this a good 30 minutes to dry at this point, and um, I'm not gonna touch it right now, but it should be good to go. So what we're gonna get to at this point is we're gonna go ahead and lay down our tooling gel coat. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that up over here. Um, this is one and a half to 2% MEKP. So we're gonna go ahead and do four ounces to start with. All right, so that took a while, but it actually had just about the perfect amount to cover both. I'm gonna go read the instructions if you need a second coat or not, and uh, I'll be right back. Hey guys, so now we're just waiting for the epoxy tooling uh, gel coat to harden up. Um, I think we got pretty decent coverage on it. A little bit of a scramble there at the end to try and get it all covered uh, nice and thick on both parts, but I think I got it. Here's the other side. So it says at temperature, which is 77 degrees, which it is not in here, it takes about 10, min 10 minutes to, uh, to harden. So for us being a little bit colder than that, we're gonna go ahead and give it, gosh, I don't know, 20, 25, we'll, we'll feel it. When it's not tacky anymore, we can go ahead and start the coupling coat, which is using our polyester resin and the chop strand mat, which we'll pull out right now, um, to bond to the gel coat. So the chop strand mat is right here. Here's our cloth, um, and our mat is in here then. Yeah. So there you go. You get a look at it in all of its glory. So we'll go ahead and try to keep this clean for the moment and uh, we'll cut a nice piece to size once we get to that stage, but we'll let this go ahead and harden up and then we'll be on our way. All right guys, so I've just gone ahead and mixed up the next coat of resin. This is dried overnight now. It's nice and dry to the touch. We're gonna go ahead and coat this all with the next coat of resin and then we're gonna lay the first layer of the chop strand mat down. So we're gonna get, to get going on that pretty quickly because I don't have much time to work with it. All right, so that was kind of a mad dash to get that done. Um, what my main issue was with it was I didn't mix up enough resin the first time. I did about double what I did on the Lycra, but it was honestly double of that. So first I mixed up eight ounces, and I had to mix up another eight ounces. For the next go down, I'm gonna go ahead and just start with like probably 18 ounces on the other side. That way I just have 20. Other than that, I'm not alright. I think I got pretty decent coverage. This 
definitely came in handy a lot for rolling out maybe air pockets or whatever. And, So we've learned from our mistakes last time. We've got a lot more resin now. This is double the amount in the first go. We're gonna repeat the same way we did the last slide. I've gone ahead and cut the uh, pieces to size this time beforehand. I found on the last side that that was actually pretty tough to get it to lay flat when there's a lot of extra material hanging. So once the gravity wants to pull it a different way, but if you cut it a little bit closer to the edges, um, they wanted to stick better. So what we did on this side is I went ahead and I cut Whole bunch of pieces um, beforehand, so they're all ready to go now before we start. Um, we're just going to lay the one layer on this, this side again. We're going to do the same way. We're going to wet the whole surface with the resin, and then we're, we'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, you know, lay down the mat and start wetting it through the same way we did the other The main thing was just getting the resin to be mixed up beforehand so not to pause halfway through that. That really kind of hurt us in the last side. We ended up scooping it out all right, but don't like it to be so close that we need to uh, be tight to the This makes up really good to do a lot of MEKP. This is, you know, 150 drops of MEKP. Actually, a little bit more than that because, again, it's not very uh, warm in here. One more layer of the fiberglass on it uh, yesterday and I let that dry overnight. Normally you'd want to do probably a lot more layers than this but then since this isn't really a uh, you know a tooling mode mold that we're going to use a, you know a bunch of times uh, we just really want to get one good part out of this we can make the final mold off of a set of these that we make with this mold later if we want to make like a really nice tooling mold but this is really just to get us going so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and try and remove this and uh, see how the release agent worked in terms of popping off our, our uh, tooling gel coat. So we'll see how that works. I'll get the camera set up on the uh, stand here and we'll time lapse through this. Hopefully this comes off as, uh, as one piece. Stay tuned. All right guys, so we got a clean release off of both sides. Um, you can see here, we had some of the primer transfer to the inside of the gel coat, so we're just gonna have to wipe that off with some light acetone, get rid of that really quick. But the shape looks great, the edges look all right. Um, what we're gonna do when we lay the, the final product is you know, go a little bit beyond these edges. Um, that way we can just trim it down to size at the end and have a nice clean edge, but the uh, inside lip looks good all the way around. Have our nice hole markings from where our screw heads were. Some of them even had the, uh, the Phillips indentation in them, pretty cool. Um, but both sides came out good. So at this point, just need to clean these up and then we'll decide what we want to do for our final project. If you want to do a carbon fiber, uh, final fender or if you want to do a uh, fiberglass cloth. 